is indeed our guest. Rock and Minutes with Jimmy B, Fox Sports 910. Tyler, it's Jimmy B and Manooch. I'll ask the first question, okay? And here it is. Since Manooch has been training you since the eighth grade, I'd like to know how in the wide, wide world of sport did you become <laughs> such a great quarterback with Manooch teaching you? Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a great question. I've been asking myself that every day. <laughs> I, no, I mean, I wouldn't. I've been. I wouldn't be here without Manute. He's uh, he just filled that work ethic in me, and he's been there since the uh, the early days when I couldn't couldn't figure out how to throw a baseball and a football differently. So definitely, he's he's been a great addition to to my toolbox. You know, it's, uh, it's always it's been a privilege and honor to be training and see how far you're growing. I I tell these guys, I just try not to screw you guys up for yeah. crying out loud. Just trying to try to get you down the deep path. But I tell you what, um, you know, watching you over the years. And you developing with your accuracy and your arm strength and what have you. What are some of the things now when you look at with guys like myself and other guys that have worked with you and just your experience that have pretty much brought you to the forefront with all the confidence and knowledge you have as a quarterback? Yeah, I mean, I think it all comes with preparation. You know, I find like I get my confidence through my preparation in the film room and then in my chemistry with the guys on the field. So. You know, whether it's throwing routes in the summer right now, leading seven on seven, and, you know, it comes with preparation and experience. You know, I, I, I've all dealt with, you know, like a lot of other players, dealt with confidence issues, dealt with certain things on the field, off the field. But if you kind of keep at it each day, you're going to find you're getting 1% better, and that's kind of what I, I kind of grow in and, and, you know, put, a, put my money in the bank and it's how can I get better each day. And I, and I think more than anything, and you being back there for this, this final year for you as far as leading the charge back there, what is different about this year's preparation versus last year's eight and five record? You guys win the last four in a row. You beat the uh, Ole Miss in the uh, Texas Bowl, the Tax Act Bowl. What's kind of that different vibe you guys have moving forward this summer? I, mean, I think we're just a tight knit unit, and you know, I think that's where we're going to really be special. Is our culture? You know, it's it's probably one of the best I've ever seen or been a part of. Just the guys that really rally together. And that want to be it, want and stay after and do hard work and want to be working out together. And, you know, you got to have the talent, which we do. We got multiple guys coming back, you know, a bunch of guys transferring on the O line and on defense. So we're kind of upgrading or getting better at each position. And, and we all really love each other. So that's kind of the biggest thing. There's no clicks. And it's, all, it's been a blast for me because it's, you know, the second, the first time I career, I've had the same offense twice. And uh, all, the, all the coaches are just, they're on board as well. So it's been, we're definitely looking to, there you go, guns blazing. Uh, Red Raiders QB Tyler Shuck is our guest here on the Right Toyota Guest Line, rocking the Newts with Jimmy B. All right, I want to ask you this one. Do players pay any attention at all to how the Big 12 has grown and with the new teams coming in and Oklahoma and Texas exiting after this season? Do players get caught up in that or is that just for fans and media? Uh, I'd say it's more, it's more fans and media. You know, we're really excited to play new teams just because it brings new challenges and new environments. But, you know, we're, our goal is still the same. That's to win a Big 12. And, you know, whoever that stands in our way, they're just going to be another opponent for us. But I think it just definitely brings some excitement and you're playing some new faces and maybe you got some buddies on that team mm -hmm. that you know. But as far as teams leaving and, you know, coming and going, it is what it is. You know, that's not stuff that's outside of our control. So we just really look forward to each game as it comes. You know, Todd, it's interesting because you look back at last year and, you know, you got injured for the first four or five games after that first game. Uh, but I got to ask, it looked like there were some signature movements or growth in the program, and I alluded to one of them. But when you all beat Texas 37-30 for an overtime at home, um, did that set the tone for the regular system? And then beating OU the last game of the year in overtime to set you up for the victory over Ole Miss. Did that somewhat kind of set the tone for this program taking the next step? I think most definitely. I mean, I think, you know, it's obviously great, you know, bulletin board material for, for those things. But for us, you know, like I was just saying before, we don't really care who we're playing. And that's how you got to approach each game is, is that whether they're a big name logo or whoever it's going to be, you got to approach it the same way because they're going to give you everything you've got. And I think if you go, you're, you're, you're scared to play a team or you're overlooking a team, you're going to be, you're going to be in the wrong either way. So you have to approach it the same way. And I think that's how we approach those games and approach every game last year. And that's why you're going to have a chance. Uh, 
Hey, Tyler. It's uh, Jackson here, the rookie. My question to you is, uh, your situation is so unique because you had six years of college football. You, alongside Sam Hartman, are like the two super senior quarterbacks this season. How do you think that's benefited you as a quarterback compared to guys who we've seen kind of leave early for the draft and not pan out for them? Yeah, I, mean, I think, I mean, I've been through so much adversity in my career and dealt with a lot of stuff mentally and just learned how to navigate, you know, team relationships, success, being a starter, being a backup. You know, I feel like I'm so equipped for, you know, the NFL to run a franchise just because of all the, the turmoil I've been through, yeah. how to deal with success and all those things for a lot of guys who come in and, you know, maybe have a, a really successful career on great teams and then you kind of get thrown into the fire in the NFL and there's a lot, you know, there's grown men around you. You don't know how to handle those relationships and, you know, I feel like I've really kind of put myself and, and earned a leadership spot on this team and, you know, I wouldn't want it any other way. You know, you don't go into college like, thinking I want to be, you know, in college for five, six years and be injured. But at this point in my career, it's like, man, this is like the best position I've ever been in. I, I wouldn't, I have no regrets. All right. So people that are listening to our show right now and they haven't heard of Texas Tech, but now that you're on the show, maybe they're going to sample a couple of their games on TV. Set everybody up. What are they going to see out of Texas Tech football when they watch you guys play? I mean, you're going to see the toughest, hardest working, most competitive team out, team out there. You know, you're going to see a lot of explosive plays and just a tough group. You know, we not we may not all be five stars, but we got guys from all over the country who are going to come in and hit you and they're going to play hard. And, you know, it's going to be really fun to watch, I think, just because how much talent we have and kind of what, what our brand is is, it's pretty special. So, you know, Coach McGuire's got us, got us really rolling, and, you know, we're excited to go out there and play. Are you going to air it out a lot, similar to what uh, Texas oh, Tech yeah. has done the past? Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do everything we can to score points, you know, and that, whether that's running the ball, you know, 20, 30 times a game, myself running the ball or throwing it 50 times. So that's what Coach Kittley, he's so special about. He doesn't have an ego, and he, he calls plays to win. Well, and it's interesting because you look at the schedule, you know, Tyler, you guys started off against, you, know, you guys are looking at, at Oregon the second game of the year after your first game. And Oregon's coming coming to Texas Tech, your old nemesis right there. Do you get do you get fired up or you look at that or you just try to treat it as it's just going to be another game for you to take on the old Ducks coming into your place? No, I mean, I'm definitely going to treat it like it's every other game, like I was talking before, but there's a lot of excitement around it just because, you know, you get to see a lot of old friendly faces, and, you know, at the support staff or the treatment staff and some of the older teammates but a lot of the, the coaches and the guys that were there when I was there were kind of long gone so you know it's going to be it's definitely going to be fun but for us and it's just going to be a good challenge for our team because they're a good they're a good football team as well and it's going to be a fun game all right I'm going to let Manute set this one up okay because <laughs> this is going to be the most important question of this he, interview. he knew where I was going Tyler he knew where I was going all right go ahead Jimmy so Manuch says that somebody climbed a crane <laughs> after 3,000 hits on social media. All right, now you have to explain, A, why did that certain person climb the uh, crane <laughs> And what was the outcome? That being his head coach, Jimmy. Yes, yeah. I know. How did that all come yeah, about, Yeah, tell Tyler. us that story. Yeah, I mean, so he, he's just kind of a spontaneous guy. He's always going to bring juice around the program. And we are, our, uh, our stadium is under, you know, $200 million football construction. And it's going to be one of the nicest in the nation and, and has all these bells. And well, it's going to be really crazy. So that's been going on for the past six months, seven months. And they got these two huge, like, beautiful cranes up with the double T logo on them. And um, so basically, all of Lubbock knows about it. And he's there was like a, a poll that if he gets – certain amount of likes on Twitter that he was going to climb it. Um, and, but his wife and his daughter said he's got to wait until after she gets married so he doesn't die. <laughs> tragically. <laughs> um, so he, had to, he waited. And then uh, actually he was going to do it with like everybody around, but I think he got a little scared. So he did, he tried to do it secretly, which, which he did. So, but I was actually walking my dog um, with my fiance and what we were like, I think that he's got to do it right now. And, and there was a whole camera crew and all the, construction guys were going he didn't want to draw a lot of uh you know a bunch of random people around to see him fall but he, he did it he climbed up really fast yeah. he was, it was actually he was moving good and got up there and did a video message and then climbed back down so it was it was pretty cool uh i actually got to see him do it in person it was pretty unique so he he definitely did it he 
he had the balls to do it, and he definitely liked wow. that. See that out of him, <laughs> man. He he does. He's got more pelotas and cojones than see. I do. That that's for you sure. You got that right. And more importantly, on October fourteenth, uh, just you know, you and your lovely fiance, Jordan, just make it. I don't. I'll sleep on the couch, the floor, <laughs> when when the cats come in to take on Texas Tech, my K State cats. So just you know. Coming into Lubbock, uh, if your mom and dad oh, yeah. haven't picked me up at, you know, <laughs> five hours before game time, make sure that brunch is ready uh, before the game. Yeah. And, and is it okay? Oh, for yeah, we'll have a welcome man for you for their, their, <laughs> yeah. their former quarterback. <laughs> perfect, perfect. I got to tell you what, hey, last question for you. How, how much does uh, Patrick Mahomes get back there and talk to you guys? And you have a relationship with, with one of the, I feel, the best quarterback in the National Football League right now. Yeah, a couple times per year. You know, my my uh, offensive coordinator and QB coach is actually his QB coach in college, so they have a really good relationship. And you know, it's kind of been one of the main reasons he comes back and you know uh, talks to us some. You know, obviously he's he's got you know he's like you said he's the best player in the NFL, so he's got a bunch of stuff going on. But getting the chance to talk to him a couple times has been pretty cool. Um, but you know what he's done for the university and this this city is, is special, and obviously that's something you want to emulate. And last but not least, have you had a chance to go to Netflix and watch Quarterback yet? I watched all eight episodes, Tyler. Have you had a chance to watch it yet? Oh, yeah. I got one more episode to go. Okay. I won't give you any spoiler alert, but it is – I think – I've had all my quarterbacks, Tyler, and all those I put out there on, on Twitter. Anybody that's a quarterback needs to watch that. My last question for you, what sticks yeah. out more importantly with Mariota, Mahomes, and Cousins, if anything, in particular? I think it's like I was saying in, in the beginning is their preparation yeah. and how they approach each day and, and you know, their their film study, how they approach their family life, how they handle, you know, ups and downs, the injuries. And that's kind of the bat behind the scenes and, and, you know, whether they lose the game or they had had something going on and how they approach the bat throw or stuff like that where you you see all the all the touchdowns and all the fame after, but you really get to see, you know, what – what goes into their thought process. And I think that's the real nitty gritty stuff that people can try and emulate and, and look after is, is how those are the best of the best. And, you know, they're going to make mistakes too. And how do they get over them? And how do they keep going and stay confident? Well, I'm going to tell you what, I'm very proud of you is as everybody else here in the Valley, you've done a phenomenal job and, and uh, just proud of how you handled everything. And I think that uh, with the, the old patience, you know, that's that proverbial thing. Things, good things will come to you. So thanks so much for taking the time. We'll try to track you down during the season since you never come home anymore. You never come out and hang out anymore. But uh, best of luck to you. Best of luck to you, Tyler. Thank you, man. It's good to hear from you guys. Thank you, Tyler. And uh, it's okay. You did a good job lying about Manoush. So we're, <laughs> we're good with that, as always. Thank you, buddy. You have a great Stop day. It. You got it. Yes, yes sir. sir. You too. There you go. Tyler Shuck. That was fun. Manuch, you as an eighth grader, yeah. you took him under your he wing. Was, he was a baseball football guy. Right. He was a pitcher, and he yeah. threw baseball. And I'm like, okay, well, this is how you do a football. This is how you do baseball. He finally clicked in his freshman year. Okay. And he got better and better. And I think he stopped playing, I think, around his sophomore year. Baseball. Baseball. And, boy, he really has taken off. But I'm, I was intrigued with Coach McGuire climbing <laughs> that 300-foot <laughs> crane if you go online and take a look at it, you should see this crane yeah it's way up this sucker's way the hell yeah. up there. there's no I looked way at it yeah if if i did i would think i'd have something tied a rope tied to the as i'm climbing uh -huh. that thing but i gotta tell you what uh tyler uh the circumstances which were at oregon for him to leave with and take the high road and they quite frank in my and they dogged him right okay? yeah he moved on goes to tech things worked out for him uh, the best. And I'm so glad how he handled everything with class, um, the high road, and all the great things he does. And uh, those are some things you'd love to see with a guy in his growth sure. that puts it behind him and moves forward. I know you're a K-State guy, Manuch, but this Texas Tech team is going to be a real dark horse in the Big They're 12. Good. They are. They're they got good. a lot of. They got all older guys. Obviously, him at quarterback. Yeah. But I like this. I like this team. I think the preseason. Uh, rankings are they got TCU, about four. four TCU, no, can Kansas State, Texas, Oklahoma, Texas Tech, TCU at five, TCU at five. Okay, yeah, so you there know, you go. My cats are right up there. Oh, they are. I just made sure that 